60-year-old retailer Circuit City enjoyed a time in the sun. It was Virginia's pride, a national retail chain with nothing but growth on its horizon. But like any story of triumph, there's always a part two. And sadly for Circuit City and its more than 30,000 employees, part two was a catastrophic fall from the corporate firmament. Ashland filmmaker Tom Wolfe chronicles the retailer's legacy. Here's an excerpt from the first part of his documentary, A Tale of Two Cities, The Circuit City Story. And while they were there, my father had his hair cut at a barber shop on Park Avenue, at Park Avenue and Robinson. And um, the barber told him that the first, South's first television station was about to open in Richmond. Now, in fact, there were TV stations in Los Angeles and New York, but nobody in Richmond had ever seen TV, certainly not in Richmond unless they traveled to New York or Los Angeles. And so uh, a light bulb went off in his head and he said, you know, I think there's, there's a big future for television. And I happen to know somebody in Long Island City, New York, that makes televisions, and maybe I should come down here and start a TV business selling TVs, and that's essentially what he did. He didn't expect or, or attempt to bring in walk-in traffic. The way of uh, obtaining business was to put a classified ad in the newspaper for a free home demonstration. People would call in, and he would try to schedule to drop off a TV set every hour, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, uh, and then come back the next night and, uh, and either pick up the TV because they had a one-day free home demonstration or collect a contract to purchase the TV. My father was a, a very clever guy and a good marketer, and they made Olympic the biggest selling brand in Richmond for the first two or three years. Um, it was a good set, but because it wasn't carried in the department stores or, or Sears, most of our clientele would, would be blue collar and African-American, because we provided better credit opportunities. The, the poor class people, they were the first ones to get television sets when television came to Richmond. Uh, you, you didn't see any television antennas out in the West End. Uh-uh, no. So that's a look at the genesis of Circuit City. And here with us is the filmmaker, Tom Wolfe. Great to have you with us. Great to be here. You used to be an employee of Circuit City. Yes, I worked for Circuit City for 12 years, then spent another 12 years with CarMax. And that story about Sam Wurzel and getting his hair cut is legend in Circuit City. And I would tell that story to, to new managers, both at Circuit City and, and CarMax. And uh, when I left CarMax in 2009, that story left with me. And it's such a great central Virginia story that I thought it would be tragic if we didn't capture it somehow. So, What was your work with Circuit City? Oh, I was, I was head of their management training programs. I ran customer relations. Uh, I was a store manager for Circuit City for many years. So I, I've been telling the story for, for basically 25 years. First as a sales counselor, I would tell it to customers because they weren't familiar with Circuit City. Then as a, uh, a store manager, as I hired new associates, and then as a management trainer, as our new managers came through, I tell them the history of, of Circuit City, which, of course, was the history of CarMax as well. Well, we've shown our audience a clip from your part one because you've cleverly arranged it as a tale of two cities. The first part is the beginning and the good years. The second part of your documentary is the not so good years. Uh, and how would you break that down? Would you say the first 50 years were good? First 50 years were really good for Circuit City. And, uh, you know, they did so many things um, to, to kind of change the, the retail landscape in, in, in America. They were the very first big box specialty retailer and they were the first to combine all of these great consumer offers together into one offer. The low price guarantee, satisfaction guarantee, a return guarantee. Um, they serviced everything they sold. They really changed American retailing and people forget that because of what happened in the last 10 years. So we have a Home Depot and a Lowe's and all the others thanks to Circuit City. Pretty much. Well, let's take a look now at your clip from part two. In the early 90s, we were neck and neck. Each of, them, each of us did 10, did 12 or 13 million, 14 million dollars per store. By 2000, we were still doing 13 million. They were doing 40 million. 
in an average store. There's no way that we could continue to be the leader. And once you're no longer the leader, then you don't get the best deals from the manufacturers. I think after I left, the philosophy was, if it doesn't have a decent margin, we don't want to carry it. So we had a much more limited assortment of computers, and certainly computer accessories uh, than Best Buy. And they quickly went sailing past us in sales per store of computers and computer accessories, because they were not focused on margin, they were focused on sales. We didn't carry games for a long time because they were low margin. Best Buy carried the games, and not only did they make the sales, but more important, I think, the games became of great interest to a, an age group that we were not attracting. You know, suddenly we were your father's Oldsmobile. I mean, we were, we were the old stores, they were the new stores, not only in, in physical appearance, but in actually what we sold. I knew we were in trouble when literally our goal one year was to just do better than Best Buy. We didn't have our own goal. But during this period, right, I mean, there was a lot of reactionary stuff to, to what was going on over at Best Buy. And I think, you know, during some of this period, uh, there was perhaps too much focus on them and not en enough focus internally. We misread Best Buy, and if we had it to do over again, Best Buy was a $500 million company in 1992. Circuit City was a $2.5 billion company. We should have just bought them and taken them off the map. Wow, Tom, a lot can change in that last decade. Yeah, that part of the documentary is called The Critical Years because there were some decisions that were made in the 1990s that kind of influenced the path that Circuit City took uh, in its final years. What would you say went wrong exactly? So many things. I, I think if you had to kind of look at some some reasons that Circuit City went under, you'd have to say they had a, a bad decision-making process. They would make wholesale changes to their consumer offer um, without testing them first. So they, they decided to get out of the major appliance business. Well, that turned out to be a not very good decision because they ended up sending customers to their competitors. Okay, uh, and then there was Best Buy. Uh, there, was, there was Best Buy that uh, they just didn't pay attention to um, and they didn't change their consumer offer uh, to, to compete with them. Um, and, and another trend would be they, they stop listening to their customers. And when you stop listening, customers tell you every day what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong if you listen to them. Uh, customers clearly chose Best Buy over Circuit City um, because it was a non-pressure, non-commission kind of environment. I remember in that last decade walking into Circuit City more than once and feeling like the customer service level just wasn't there. Right. Well, they dropped their training program. They had two weeks of training, or at least a week of training for all new sales counselors uh, for the first 50 years that they were in business. Well, they, they, they dropped their training program uh, and therefore didn't instill the kind of culture uh, in their new associates that they had in their previous associates. And also their top sales guys I, and gals. I understand they were let go <laughs> because the of end, their salaries. Yeah, they were paid above the market rate. Uh, and so Circuit City let them go and then offered to hire them back at a lower pay scale. Oh, that wow, was, that'll engender devotion. Yeah, that was a, not only a public relations disaster, but you know, if you're a sales counselor and you see the top guy getting fired, you're, there is absolutely no incentive for you to do anything other than show up for work each day. What a fascinating story. Of course, the good news, there's still CarMax, a spawn of Circuit City, so there's something to, to Yeah, speak. and I think that's, that's kind of the happy ending to the story, is, is that CarMax is their legacy, and it took all of the consumer uh, offers that, that Circuit City had and applied them to an industry that was very much in need of those offers. Now people can see your entire documentary here on WCVE TV and WHTJ Charlottesville. It's February 15th at 9 p.m. Now give us the website where people can find out more. You can find out more at circuitcitystory.com. Thank you so much, Tom Wolf. Thanks for having me.